Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome to Here Comes the Weirdo Parade for another week and another weirdo. We hope that theme song is stuck in your head and stays stuck in your head and keeps reminding you to keep coming back week after week after week. I am Skix of Skix's Greater Shows. I am your host, but not the only weirdo here today. Today we have, believe it or not, one of our very first non-human guests. Would you please introduce yourself to the nice people? Well, my name professionally is Mermaid Anya, and if you want to just know me, it's Angie. So that's who I am. And I am happy to be a weirdo mermaid. <laughs> Speaking as a mermaid or as a performer, up to you or both, could you um, share with us some of the ways you have been a weirdo in your life? Um, I consider myself a weirdo where my mermaiding is concerned because I have been this way since I was five years old. Um, and I'm well into my 50s, so... Uh, once I found out that I could have a tail and wear it and do professional things with it, it made me very happy. But um, I do please, there was a time and a place where I lived under the water, and I'm, I, some people would say I'm weird for that. I believe it. Uh, some other things that I think probably make me a weirdo but not so weird anymore is um i am queer uh and i have had a couple of strokes but uh, it's kind of funny now when you say you're queer it's not that big of a deal but back when i first came out it really was so uh, i'm glad to see that change you heard it here folks mermaids can be queer Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're part of a group, aren't you? Can you tell us about that? I am. I um, run the Mermaids of the Great Salt Lake. Uh, we do um, all kinds of different things. We do conventions and parties. Right now, we're performing up at the Ren Fair in Ogden. Uh, we have our last weekend of that coming up. Um we go to Skixie shows and we like to be there. Oh, we love to be there. And um, gosh, we just do, we do lots of things. And I have a group of about 20 people behind me. So there are a lot of us. So there are, <laughs> there are 20 mermaids of the Great Salt Lake? Mm-hmm. Uh, could you talk a bit about kind of some of the variety in there? Because you're not all oh. the same, right? No, we have... Um, mermen we have a merman who comes in drag sometimes um we have oh my gosh we have everything from age who's our youngest Ooh, i think 16 17 all the way up to 75 so uh we have men women um, in between, whatever they want to go as. That's one thing about my group is you can be whatever you want to be in my group. Uh, you can be whatever kind of mermaid you want to be. You don't have to be a Disney mermaid. You can, you can be whatever kind you want. To be. So if you have your own persona, which is a, a, a personality they've built around their mer being, um, they can act it out if they want to, and, and yeah. So I personally don't have one. I just feel like I'm me. So I kind of I'm I'm always whether I'm in tail, not in tail. This is me. So and uh, the the mermaids have actually a few years ago uh, claimed me as one of their own, but I have yet to go to one of your events. Uh, and, yeah. and, and be a mer person with you. Um, 
That's you not are always welcome. Thank you. It's not for <laughs> want of of being part of that. It's just well, you know, the chaos of the life of a performer. Yeah. And producer. Um, yeah, you're a little busy. A little bit. <laughs> A little bit, and and the the unfortunate thing is, I'm busy doing things I love, but the the balls that get dropped have to be the things that don't pay rent, um, and and I think that's tragic, I think that's it horrible. Is, um, if I if I can't do everything I want to do in a week, I I can't just drop the the paying job. Um, I know. And as much as I love the paying job, I. Uh, there are definitely weeks where I'd rather frolic with the mermaids than, um, <laughs> you know, run cameras for, for someone's corporate meeting, which is a great way for the theater to make money and for me to make money, but it's way less fun than mermaids. Yeah, I know. I wish I could retire and just frolic. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> what, is, what is retirement? I don't think that exists anymore. Um, I don't think that exists for our ages. Uh so sad. Yeah, I, I, um, you know, I'm, I'm 52 myself, and uh, it does cross my mind as, as I, as I get up toward what used to be retirement age. I haven't had the sort of jobs where I can set aside a pension. There's no way I can retire. Nope. No, me either. Me either. I'm 54. Same thing. Same thing. Is it weird being 50 something for you? It really is for me. It is. Because I don't feel 50-something, except my body feels it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I have a lot more ibuprofen in my life than I did 20 years ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, we still get to play. Which we is uh, a truth that simply by existing visibly, we can demonstrate to people around us. Because I know there are people who are panicking because they're going to turn 30. You know, and they 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 feel like their their life is going to end when they turn twenty. Um, right. <laughs> they should they should see some of the senior weirdos out there, uh, still strutting our stuff, still being weird and impractical and ridiculous, and uh, and queer and uh, disabled and and just all kinds of weirdos uh, living our lives um, and expressing ourselves as ourselves. As much as we can. Absolutely, absolutely. We have to. We, we have, have to. to. How boring would life be? I I, uh, I don't know about you, but I I go through periods where I kind of want to hide my weirdness, um, you know, because I I feel unsafe or just because I'm going through a depressive phase or whatever. Um, and a thing that helps me through that is remembering that, um me being visibly a weirdo can have a positive impact on, on the people who see me. Even if they don't run up to me and say, oh my god, you're you're a clown, how amazing, or oh my god, you're, um, you know, you got purple hair, or, or, or oh my god, I saw you in that show. Yeah. Uh, even if they don't say anything, uh, particularly in Utah, they might see one of us and go, oh, that's a way to be I didn't know existed. You know? <laughs> um... And it might give them a little bit of freedom to express themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, with the children that I see, I mean, some of them get it. You know, some of them know that maybe that tail wasn't grown. Um, and they're so surprised to see that that's something that you can do with your life. You can, you can get out there and, and be a mermaid if you want to, or... Um, yeah, the purple hair. I really can't hide being a weirdo. <laughs> I don't know that you can either. <laughs> Not for long. Uh, when I start a new job, I tend to keep my, my light under a bushel, as it says. Um, but it, 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 not for long. Not for long. Yeah. I've never been one that, that, like, I have always been out about my queerness. Because the way I look at it is... They get to know me. It's representation. They get to know me, and they get to know, hey, she's a pretty cool person, no matter if she is queer or lesbian or whatever. She's a pretty cool person. And maybe I was wrong to think that they're all bad people, or, you know. So I, I just, I let it out there. 
Do you do you ever? This is something I've noticed in myself uh, recently. Um, sometimes when I'm out in the world looking weird, like if I'm wearing something funny or, or just otherwise looking out of the norm. And I feel the urge to yell at someone in traffic or something. I kind of like, no, I don't want them to think that weirdos are mean. Um, and it's very silly that, that something as broad in general as, as weirdo or, or queer or whatever. Um, for some of these people, I might represent the entirety of the, the non-normal world. Um, exactly. And, yeah, and, it does make it. it does make it so you have to stop and think about what you do. <laughs> it also means that if if I dress up weird and leave the house, I don't give myself the option to close up again because I, you know I'm I'm wearing a, a suit made of clouds or <laughs> uh, that's cool though. <laughs> it is cool, and and I'll do it on purpose. Like particularly if I'm going to a party or something and I'm feeling a little shy, I'll dress extra wacky. I'll I like you know really? wear an evening gown or or something that will cause people to notice so that um, I'm sort of giving myself a boost out of hiding. I have not tried that because I am scared to death of parties. Oh. Always have been. Yeah. Parties are not my thing. Unless there's a lot of people there that I know. But um, they're usually not my thing. I try that. Dress super wacky at one of them. Yeah. Mm. Um. Do you have any anything you would like to say? Um, say to your younger self, growing up, to to oh. in, in, to encourage in your weirdness. They don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I was picked on at school so badly. And I thought that those people mattered so much, and they don't. They don't matter. And um, I know it's cliche, but it gets better. It does. Uh, it, it may be really hard to be that gay, lesbian, queer person while you're in high school or junior high or whatever it may be, but it will get easier as you get older hang in there um it makes me so sad when i see children that are struggling with it or their family has thrown them out or whatever um but it really does get better it really does i think um yes absolutely and and it's kind of funny when you said they don't matter we, we didn't really have to ask who they was you know, them. You know, them. Them. Um, you know, you, you could probably name names if you wanted, but the, the general them is, is absolutely understandable. Um, I think being here in... Are you? Did you grow up in Utah? Uh, I moved here when I was about 17. I lived in San Diego. Actually, when I was a child, I lived in Missouri, and that's where it was really terrible. <laughs> Missouri's not fun. No. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see. I've, I've been in Missouri, but only for like a weekend for a convention. Um, though, interestingly, it was a, a haunted house convention, so it was quite fun. Oh, good. Good. I yeah. lived in a very small town in Missouri, and unless you grew up there, you didn't matter, and they picked on you. And once we moved to California, things were fine. Oh, you know? San Diego is lovely. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I wish I could go back, but who can afford to go back? <laughs> well, I mean, so Salt Lake City is getting more and more expensive. So I. Uh, this is true. We're gonna we're gonna catch up to them if we haven't already. I saw last night on the news that rent for a one bedroom apartment averages fourteen hundred dollars. That's insane. It is. It absolutely is. <laughs> And do you think it's a coincidence that we also have a fairly large homeless population? Uh, no. 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 No, because I, think... I could end up there easy. Yeah. I, I, we, we have seven roommates in my apartment. Oh, wow. Um, just to it, make it ends meet, right? Just to make ends meet. And 
if one of us moved out suddenly, I'm not sure we could keep up with the rent, you know? Um, and we, our rent was raised during the, the initial lockdown of the pandemic. Oh, great. Because our, our landlord was not, not, not nice. But, um, yeah, rent went up a lot, has gone up a lot during the pandemic, like across the board here, which I think is sleazy as fuck. Mm-hmm. You are allowed to swear in this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's really, unfortunately, my partner does not get along well with other people. So we can't have roommates, really. So, I mean, I should say he gets along. He doesn't live well with other people. <laughs> sure. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's natural. Um, I, given my preference, would, would be just me and my husband. Um, yeah. And, and living somewhere quiet, um, this, this is not a quiet place and there are a lot of people here. Um, <laughs> and you, you can like people and you can be friends with people and not want to live with them. Yeah. Living with mean, people's hard. It is. Um, you know, and I, I'd rather the, the noise in my home be my noise, the mess in my home be my mess. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, just even if everyone is, is the wonderfulest, bestest roommate, just by sheer numbers, you're increasing the amount of chaos in your life. You know? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of people. If, if someone's only a bonehead 1% of the time, it, it adds up with the more people you have. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's my turn to be a bonehead, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I know, I know I've done my share of pissing people off, so. Yeah. You know. Do, uh, do the mermaids, um, actually swim? We do, unfortunately, being in a landlocked state. Um, we personally don't get a lot of water gigs. But our tails, we completely learn how to use them in the water. We, we know how to swim in them. We, we just don't get the opportunity anymore, unfortunately. But, Mermaids in California, you bet they're swimming. <laughs> so if you're in the Salt Lake area and you would like some mermaids at your gig and you have a pool? Absolutely. These these are your folks. I'm pointing yeah. it that way. Um, <laughs> and uh, and another, um, we, we touched on a lot of different kinds of people. Um, and we, we didn't mention one that, that I think is... Um, also important, you mentioned you're not all Disney mermaids, and that suggests, you know, white and thin and young. And, yes, yes. Um, your, your, your group and also, not. yeah, <laughs> your, your group has a range of, of, of some folks that are not all three of those things. Exactly. Um, We're not all, a, a lot of us are fluffy. Um, and I mean, um yeah we're just we're we're not all white thin and young and i like there to be an opportunity for everyone to do this if they want to do it and they shouldn't be told they can't do it because they're not and believe me there are groups where you cannot i've i've yes <laughs> i've seen them i've witnessed them there are groups where you cannot be over a certain age can't be over a certain size um, and, and you're just not like that. I, I, you know, we, we don't have to name names, but I would go so far as to say to any, uh, listeners or viewers, um, mermaids of the great salt lake are the ones you, you want to talk to. Um, they're, they're not the only mermaids in town. No, nope, there are I, a lot of us. <laughs> I think they are, uh, the most inclusive and diverse mermaids. And, and I think that's that's wonderful and powerful, and that's a big part of why I keep inviting them to to Gonzo Rising and some of the other shows uh, that I produce. Um, and they are um, wonderful. They're I mean I basically have them as guests. They you know because of the tales they can't really come up on stage, um, <laughs> but their presence adds some some lovely weirdness uh, to to the experience. Which um, I, I think 
I think having the mermaids makes the space more inviting. Oh, I, I think I think y'all are, are so uh, welcoming and open and clearly there to have fun. And um, if if the audience isn't really responsive, you are, and and you you actually help keep the audience uh, awake. Um, and and you're absolutely part of the family. And uh, I think one of the things I like about doing events the way I do is that sometimes after a show, someone will come up to me and say, Hey, I never thought I could do something on stage, but after seeing all those weird people, maybe I can do something on stage. What do you think? <laughs> you know, I could do that. You know, and, and if, if someone has only seen Disney mermaids, they might look at y'all and go, whoa, you've got a exactly. drag queen mermaid and, and, and senior mermaids and all kinds of mermaids. Uh, and exactly. uh, I, I think there's something empowering in that. And I think throughout this whole series, I pick on Utah a lot. <laughs> well. And there's reason for it. Um Outside of our circles, uh, a lot of Utah is very homogenous, very, let's be honest, not as many families as you would expect for a population this size, put it that way. Yeah. Um, and and there's a lot of sameness, you know, the same haircuts, the same, you know, um, definitely mostly white, mostly uh, thin, mostly um, kempt you know, tidy. Um, mm -hmm. th th there's a kind of politeness in Utah that I find kind of distressing sometimes where you have to say, have a nice day, no matter the circumstances, or, or you're going to be judged for it. And, and if you're, um, if you look outside the norm, you will either be judged with dismay or targeted as someone to convert. Like, clearly, that one's not one of us, so let's go convert him. <laughs> um, and it can be really frustrating. And I didn't grow up here, and I can't imagine what that would do to a person growing up in that. Um, yeah. But Salt Lake City is, is kind of a, a bubble of, of semi-sanity. Um, I, I, th I, you know, I haven't seen studies or anything, but I think... The sort of kids who grow up in their family and want to get out the second they're allowed to, they're, they're the ones that wind up here. Pretty high. <laughs> and yeah. that, uh, and sadly, that means a lot of queer kids, and it means uh, a, a lot of kids with, uh, with mental health issues and, and neurodivergence, and a lot of people who just don't fit in. Yeah. Who... In in our world, would be some of the could be some of the joyous weirdos instead of the secret, you know, trying to hide it, trying to stop being weird. Um, you know, if you try to be normal and it fails, probably what you were never supposed to be in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> you know, find a find a way to make it work for you. Uh, find other weirdos. Come find the weirdos. We we do tend to find each other. Um, and Thank goodness. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, I mean, my circle, I, I've got, you know, mermaids and belly dancers and clowns and, and haunt monsters and, uh, magicians and, um, with, within all that, uh, people of color, people with disabilities, neurodivergent people, queer people. Oh my goodness. So many of my people are queer people. You, you, <laughs> you, you, you just statistically, like, really unlikely, except that, you know, people tend to find each other. Yeah, it's funny when people outside of Utah talk to you. I, I mean, I've had it happen. I'm sure you have. That they're surprised at the amount of weirdos that are actually here. Yeah. And, well, we all have to have some place to go. <laughs> it, and we're all pushed out there. So there are a lot of us here. And I, and I think there's a certain amount of truth that once you escape a, a life that's been oppressive for you, you sometimes switch to the opposite as much as you can. Um, so some of our, our weirdos are like 
new escapees, and they, they get a little intense, and then eventually kind of find their own niche, or find yeah. their, their, their own flavor of weirdness. But sometimes they're a little intense when they first come out to us. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and uh, fortunately, we've got a large community of weirdos who support each other, so um, that bit of intended city sort of gets diluted. Um, yeah. That said, not all weirdos are fans of each other. You know, we, we definitely have uh, conflict and... Uh, definitely. And and more than I would like to see. Yeah, I used to be part of the of a dance community. A couple of them. And the, the backbiting and stuff that happens between the different groups it's it's kind of sad it's it's really sad <laughs> but hopefully they all grow up and realize that it's not necessary my my secret hope is that they all start watching this podcast and and learn from it and and realize our commonalities among our weaknesses because to the you know uh burlesque community has a lot of what you're talking about and mm -hmm. <laughs> to the people at large in Utah, the burlesquers are no more or less weird than, you know, the 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 murder clowns and and drag mermaids. You know, they're they're all weird. Yeah. Um. And so, trying to be the normalist weirdo is not a winning strategy. <laughs> it is not. That's like trying to be the straightest queer person. Uh, you know, and then you become Pete Buttigieg and. You know, more power to him, but he is not a, he's, he's tried very hard to not be a weirdo. Um, and I think there's a little bit of sadness to that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure he's doing fine and, and being as genuine as he can, but he looks to me like, why am I picking on politicians all of a sudden? But he, <laughs> he, he, he seems like he, he's spent an awful lot of time crafting his image to be the most normal queer person, or I, I doubt he would use queer, the most normal gay person. Right. Um, so that you can say, look, I'm just like you, but that tends to throw the weird ones under the bus. Yeah. yeah. You know, look, I'm just like you, not like those drag queens over there. Right, right. You know, right. not like the leather daddies in the pride parade, you know? No, of course not. <laughs> And at time of recording, Pride is coming right up. Do you, do you folks do anything for Pride? We actually go to, uh, well, we we used to be in the parade when we were part of the leather community. Um, another weirdo spot for me. Leather mermaids. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, we used to be in the parade. Oh, my necklace is just coming up. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I, I've gotten too old for being in the parade and marching. It's exhausting. So we watch it. Uh, it, it, it. We go usually Saturday and enjoy a little bit of the um, the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the festival. Yeah, thank you. The festival, and then we go Sunday morning and watch the parade, and then go have some beer, go home and sleep. <laughs> it's nothing like too much sun and some overpriced beer. Um, <laughs> it's all part of the festival experience. Yeah. Uh, I've I've worked Pride a number of times. This year, no one reached out to me. Um, so uh, I, I assume that's just because there's so many people clamoring um, that the fact that I didn't reach out to them put me to the bottom of the list. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to take it personally, but um, we'll we'll do our own. You know, I'll just spend the day being as gay as I possibly can. Sure. You know, truck stops and cocktail parties. Nothing. Yeah, drinking <laughs> overpriced beer. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I I hope this year this this will be my first time going since my stroke. So hopefully I can uh, handle it. I I know I can handle the parade, but I don't deal well with crowds anymore. Stupid enough, but um, and and the heat and all that. So we'll see. But that's that's our plan. We paid for it, so... <laughs> Just remember, you're always allowed to sit down in the shade at any point for no reason. And, yes. And, I, and, yeah, if you can find it. <laughs> if you can find it. And you're allowed to stop smiling at some point. Oh, okay. Well, I'm <laughs> sure I will. 
All right, well, uh, that is our time. Do you have any parting words to the weirdos of the world? Um, just get out there and do your thing. And if you want to uh, talk to the mermaids, hire the mermaids, join the mermaids. Um, we are on Facebook under Mermaids of the Great Salt Lake. We are on Instagram under Mermaids of the Great Salt Lake. No, wait, Mermaids of Great Salt Lake. No, the, because our past owner forgot the password. So, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, um, we'll be at the Juneteenth celebration uh, performing. Uh, what else do we have coming up? Uh, oh, we have Ogden Pride. We'll be at Ogden Pride. We do love to do the Pride events. Um, and I think we we are going to be a trans Pride. So cool. Um, it, things I know about. it will be a few weeks uh, before we go to air. So some of that may already have passed by by the uh, time you see this. Um, but look up Mermaids of the Great Salt Lake at either of those, at either Facebook or Instagram. Or you can always reach out uh, to me through the podcast, um, and I should always know how to put you in touch with any of our guests who are willing to be gotten in touch with by strangers, which is not <laughs> going to be everybody. No. All right. Well, that's it for us for this week, friends and neighbors. Here comes the Weirdo Parade will recommence next Monday, same time, same place. See you then. God bless you all. God save the king. It's, it's the work of the devil. You feel better after you drink this. Grog? 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 I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Can't help that. <laughs> yeah, all bad here. Comes the Weirdo Parade is a production of Skixie's Greater Shows. That's Skixie with two X's, Skixie's Greater Shows.com to check out more. Our theme song, Here Comes the Weirdo Parade, is a production of the Whistling Swans and copyright them. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of the producers, but are edited to accurately represent the conversation with the guest or guests. We hope you will tune in next week. Here comes the Weirdo Parade airs every Monday at 2 p.m. Mountain Time. You can help support this podcast and other Skixie's Greater Show productions by going to patreon.com forward slash skixual. That's forward slash S-C-I-X-U-A-L. Again, that is patreon.com forward slash skixual, and there are benefits to dedicating even one dollar per month, including getting these episodes a week early.